Hello guys, so I spent roughly a week researching one question. If someone wants to move from WordPress for the blog to something on Laravel, does Laravel ecosystem has something to offer? And believe me, currently a lot of people are thinking to move from WordPress. Here's one tweet, another tweet, WordPress for 14 years moving somewhere else. And also Ian Lansman, often called godfather of Laravel, is tweeting about the same thing. Just Google WordPress drama. I don't want to get into that context, but currently a lot of people are trying to move from WordPress to somewhere. And over a week, I've been trying multiple Laravel CMS packages and tools, and my choice came down to three packages. The first is Statomic. The second is Winter CMS, which is actually a fork of October CMS. And the third one is Twill CMS. And I hear some of you screaming that Statomic is not free, so the comparison is not really fair, but we will get to the Statomic license and price later in this video after we talk about the differences and the features of all those packages. I compared and evaluated those packages based on one simple use case to recreate a simple blog, which is official Laravel blog. I tried to recreate exactly that with each CMS individually. And also I evaluated on four criteria. First, installation experience and does it even work? Second is overall look and feel of admin area. Is it convenient and user experience? The third is creating that blog structure from admin area. Is it convenient to add a blog? And then number four is front end. So is it easy? Is it possible to create a simple but custom design like this one? And after that week of research, I started shooting videos of trying to recreate that blog with each of them and realized that it's quite a lot of video material, so it would be too long for just a YouTube review. So I decided to split. For those who want to go deeper and see the actual step-by-step, -step, I have a course. I released a new course after a very long time, a video course on Laravel Daily, one hour long, one hour and 16 minutes, reviewing those three CMSs step-by-step, -step, trying to recreate the blog with all the details and also added more criteria compared to WordPress and also touch alternative CMSs. And some more details on my personal thoughts here. But here on YouTube, as usual, traditionally, I will summarize it into like 10 minutes or so, hopefully, still showing the main things that you need to know and understand. Finally, before showing those in action, a quick disclaimer that I'm not an expert in any of those CMSs. I was trying it out as kind of a noob user, but as a Laravel developer, so my questions should be roughly similar to the questions that you would have as Laravel developer trying those packages out. And also the conclusions from my use case of simple blog may be different from your case of using CMS or WordPress or your project. So with all that intro and disclaimers done, let's go see the things. The main thing you need to understand here is that coming from WordPress, the blog is kind of inside already installed for you. So you install WordPress and you go to pages or posts and then start writing. In all the Laravel CMSs I've tested, blog is not something configured by default. You need to install or configure it yourself and also in different CMSs, it's called differently, which is kind of the main message here. Every CMS you try, it has its own learning curve, learning terms, new things to get familiar with, so you may not like it at first. So in Statomic, for example, to create a blog, you need to create a collection. Collection is basically a type of pages. For example, collection could be products, it could be blog, it could be news or something like that. And each collection has its own set of settings, which you define first, and then you start writing those entries into collection. So for example, for blog collection, which you create, you can edit collection itself with a lot of things to configure here like route, like layout, template, design, and stuff like that. But then what impressed me more is that for every collection, you can define a so-called blueprint, which is a set of fields for that collection. So if you go inside of the blueprint of blog, you can define title, content, author, and others, and you can create more field. And this is the extensive list of fields with a lot of logic and custom behavior around them. So it's kind of WordPress advanced custom fields just included in the CMS 
by default without any plugins. And this is kind of, I would say, the core feature and the core benefit of using Statomic. So you define the structure for your blog or for your news section or something, and then your clients go and edit that blog articles. For example, click here, and this is how it looks. So the fields you see in the form are defined actually in the blueprint beforehand. So it's pretty flexible. Also, what you need to understand about Statomic is that by default, it saves all the data here in static files in the same repository. It is configurable. You can still use the database, but by default in the file system here, I've opened it. We have a folder content, then collections, and then for example, blog, and then I have markdown file, which is exactly what you see now in admin area. So yeah, this is Statomic from the admin area point of view. And from the front end, you need to define the layouts and the views of your blog in resources views blog files, which are generated from admin area, but those are not blade files by default. By default, Statomic uses its own template engine called Antlers. And this is how it looks. So you have the same HTML with some things based on Statomic language, like collection blog becomes a for each loop and automatically gives you the set of fields inside. So this is how the template of the homepage looks like. And the main layout you also define in handlers, for example, taxonomy categories, and then you put template content inside in addition to header and footer. So yeah, this is Statomy. Moving on to the second CMS, which is Winter CMS. And historically, it is a fork of another popular system called October CMS, which is very old. It started as far as I remember in Laravel 4 or something. And in 2021, some part of that October CMS contributors and maintainers disagreed with October CMS owners and forked it into a separate winter CMS three years ago. But the connection is important because part of the winter CMS functionality still relies on plugins and themes and core features of October CMS. So it's not totally separated. And this is how admin area looks like after the installation and the menu item blog appeared only after I installed a plugin. So again, in every CMS blog is not by default. In case of Statomic, it's a collection that I needed to create. In case of Winter CMS, I needed to install this. WN blog plugin, which is installed via Composer. So you do Composer require, and then also I needed to run PHP Artisan Migrate, which was not in the docs. So I had to ask on the official Discord on Winter CMS. And this was my overall impression about Winter CMS that some parts are not documented thoroughly enough. But anyway, when I managed to run that blog from admin panel, here's how it looks like. Post and categories, and then you edit the post in this editor. And have you noticed the similarity of Statomic and Winter CMS in terms of editing experience? In both cases, you see Markdown. I haven't checked it deeper. Perhaps you can switch to visual editors with help of some configuration or plugins, but by default, it feels like both CMSs were created for developers to write content in Markdown language. But yeah, there's a visual preview on the right-hand side and you just edit the content, choose the categories, and then manage the publishing, featured image, and a few more things. For the front-end template, it wasn't really easy in Winter CMS. I had to understand one thing that I needed to create in CMS. I needed to create a set of pages. So there's a home page, there's category page, and then blog post page. For example, if we go to home, I needed to drag the component of post list from the blog plugin, then configure some parameters here. So how many posts do I want and stuff like that. And then in the markup area down below, I needed to write the full HTML with some language of winter CMS, similar to Statomic Antlers. I'm not even sure which language it is, to be honest. But basically, you're adding HTML in this editor online. You save and then it refreshes. There's also layouts. Same thing. You have default HTM. You put HTML here with partials. For example, you can put site header. So there's partials, header HTM, 
which is also in the editor here and inside of any partials or layouts you can drag and drop components for example like category list here and to understand how to show some information from some of the fields i needed to read the docs and google quite a lot and in some cases i didn't even find the solution for example how to view the author author name it seems to be not in the plugin but overall i managed to do something like this so winter.test is the front end where i can click releases and on this page i didn't customize the html design so this is how it looks by default but you get the idea of how it works and by the way i didn't show the statimic test home page front page this works as well with envoyer forge and others filtered by category now the final contestant in this review is twill cms and this is what admin area looks like by default with installed starter kit called basic page builder which adds pages here so you can add a new page and manage it it's not a blog it's more like four pages like about us contact and stuff like that so how do i add a blog here in the official docs i didn't find any mentions of blogs or news like plugin or something like that so i had to google it and landed on this tutorial my first twill module which explained to me that to create a blog i need to create a module which would create the admin area for me to manage the blog field by field so in short you create a module which generates the laravel files for you model migrations routes and other thing then you add the navigation manually to your app service provider then again manually you add fields to your migration which is pre-generated as a skeleton but then you add fields manually you migrate then you get to the controller that has been pre-generated and specify the fields for the form of your blog and while i was reading that tutorial i realized one thing that twill cms is basically the same as filament so even on the homepage of twill cms they are positioning themselves as cms toolkit and this is important they don't build the cms for you they provide you the functionality to build your own structure for the cms from forms and tables and then in the tutorial or in the docs i was expecting something about front-end theme and how to customize the layout but i found that twill doesn't generate any of that it's just for the back end and then you're on your own working with page content controller for example customize it however you want so on the front end you can use inertia live wire or whatever you want which works with the model and the database structure like page content from twill so that's why i didn't even pursue creating the full demo of laravel blog because it would be kind of creating a new laravel application on the front end and not even using it as a cms so in a way i kind of disqualified twill from that cms review but still talking about it here because for some cases for some companies it is actually the goal to create the cms structure from admin panel and twill seems to be good for that and then for the front end for theme your own your own creating kind of separate laravel project just for that so from my overall impression from those three cmss statamic is kind of a clear winner just judging by one metric of amount of wtfs per minute in winter and twill i had to question almost every move and some of that was not documented unclear or just plain didn't work and another argument in favor of statomic and by the way i'm not affiliated with statomic here i don't get paid by anyone for this video so statomic releases if you go to the list of releases on their github this is 16 hours ago before that the version was five days ago two weeks ago three weeks ago so they are on a weekly cycle of new releases similar to laravel in case of other cmss winter cms is kind of on a monthly release cycle if that and twill cms even more rare on quarterly release cycle and if we're talking about plugins and themes for example statomic has marketplace of add-ons and starter kits which basically are themes some of them free some of them are paid and we'll get to the price in a minute and also in the marketplace you see add-ons which are plugins also some free some paid hundreds of plugins available so statomic in general is an actively moving ecosystem which is important for the future as a brand and this is where we get to pricing 
So if we go to the pricing page of Statomic, most people are saying that it's not free, but it's not exactly the case. There is solo plan free, so you can totally use Statomic for your own personal blog. From feature perspective, they did a brilliant job that if you want multiple users in Statomic, then you need the license, which is almost kind of the best definition and the difference between solo and pro, which means you have multiple users and you are a pro or a company at that point. Then the price is pretty high, 275 per site. So their main target audience is agencies. And for agencies, if they are creating the website to their clients, that amount is a budget line, like they would charge for developer hours, they also charge for CMS like this. So I guess if you're in agency space, then Statomic is kind of a no brainer if you have such budgets. And this price, my kind of overall conclusion about that price, this is the reason why Statomic is better than others and moving faster. Because think about it, users of Statomic are actually investors in their ecosystem, in their tool, and then Statomic creators, Jack and the team, have the money to improve the CMS, provide more features, support, and stuff like that. For others, it's mostly like a hobby project, which you cannot really trust whether they will survive in a year, whether they will approve your pull request and stuff like that. So Statomic is not free for a reason. Again, I'm not affiliated with them, but that pricing does make sense if they want to build a sustainable business with ecosystem about Statomic. Similar to me, I have Laravel Daily Premium for courses. If I didn't have that, then I wouldn't be able to shoot free YouTube videos. I would do it only on like nights and weekends with much lower quality. But moving away from Statomic and getting back to the original question of moving WordPress to where and whether something exists in Laravel, my overall conclusion is similar to this tweet that Laravel CMSs and many other CMSs are nowhere even close to the experience of WordPress at the moment. Installation experience, editing experience, deployment on shared hosting or whatever, availability of themes and plugins and support and communities and stuff like that. So if I had to start my own personal small blog, I would probably choose still WordPress. But if I had to choose from Laravel ecosystem, then if I had an agency client who would pay for that, I would choose Statomic. Otherwise, I would probably choose Filament just because I have a lot of experience with it. So I have separate Filament daily channel and Filament examples. So I do know how to quickly create the structure for the CMS there, and then would separately create the front end theme design. But again, that's my personal preference. And that's why it always depends on the project, on your use case, on your past experience with various CMS projects. So consider that review and that conclusion, just my personal point of view. And now time for you guys to share your opinion. Let's discuss in the comments. Maybe your experience with Laravel CMSs are different. Maybe I misunderstood something from there. Or where would you move your WordPress projects? If you do move, if you're planning to, let's discuss in the comments below. And again, if you want a deeper dive with installation step-by-step -step of those CMSs, I will put the link to one hour course in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.